You're listening to a Roddenberry podcast. Oh, welcome back. Hello. It's midweek on Mission Log Engage. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is the show where, of course, we answer your questions and engage with your comments and thoughts on the show and on Trek in general. You know, what's cool, Norman, you and I were talking off air about how uh, we, we get to dig through the archive, we get to answer current questions, and then there are questions that come in that are specifically geared to engage. So Absolutely. It's a little, yeah, it's a little meta, and and mm -hmm. that's fun, and that's what we have today. This might become a regular thing now that Wednesdays are like lightning round day. Lightning so, round hump day. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, Paul, who has been hitting us with the questions, sent us some more, and uh, why don't you uh, kick us off, okay? These aren't getting any easier, by the way. No. I mean, Paul, you're, these are good questions, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so this is from Paul. This is our lightning round. We have a few questions. We're going to start with question one. This is a tough one, John. Okay. Favorite Star Trek series and why? <laughs> Go. Yeah. I mean, that, that, well, that's a problem, isn't it? Because uh, you've got, and maybe my favorite Star Trek series hasn't even come out yet. Maybe oh, that is so esoteric. Maybe in 2022 or 23, it'll be a different answer. Who knows? Hey. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. That answer is strange in so many different new world possibilities. I, will... <laughs> I see what you did there. Mm -hmm. um, the problem, I mean, anytime you pick a favorite or a least favorite, that might change for different reasons for how you're feeling in the moment, right? I still think that TNG is kind of the gold standard of what Star Trek is about, you know, the, the aspirations of Star Trek. I think DS9 is probably the best written in terms of developing characters over time and giving them some terrific dialogue and some investment from us, the audience, in their lives. It, it just, look, for anybody who has caught episodes of Mission Log where we discuss DS9 and we're critical of it, um, and then you get upset about us being critical of it. <laughs> First of all, know that that comes from a place of love and also know mm -hmm. that that comes from a place of respect about this journey that we have been on with DS9. I, I think it's an exceptional show. Um, we always have to look at it through the lens of what are they trying to say, though. There is so much that I love about Voyager. <sighs> I, so much I love about Enterprise. I have to go back to TOS, though. Because I, I feel like the further away I get from TOS, the more I'm impressed by it when I go back and catch it, even in snippets, mm. even in pieces, you know? Mm -hmm. Their first season, unlike any other Star Trek since, their first season just starts with a bang, and there are so many good episodes. There's a couple of terrible ones, too, but only a couple in that first season. And there's something about lightning in a bottle the magic of that cast the chemistry that they have right from the get-go um and you know if, if you're trying to explain to somebody what is star trek about well yeah tng might be the more polished representation of that but tos is where that groundwork is laid and because of that there's so much good payoff when you get to go with those characters for 25 years literally for 25 years to the finale of their uh, their last movie together so tos it, yeah i it, it's my favorite uh <laughs> what about you norman so i i know i this is a very soul-searching question it is you know, yeah. because you know when you when you pick your favorite series or favorite movie or favorite book you know you have to look at it from how does it speak to you like in a spiritual sense how much does it speak to you in terms of an entertainment value sense i think that for me the original series has the greatest amount of entertainment value for me because uh william shatner and the the, the legacy of his style uh just the the kitschiness of the 1960s production values uh, the the ability to suspend your disbelief, looking at a styrofoam rock and thinking that that's an alien life form. There's so much that's, I think there's so much in TOS that demands your attention because mm -hmm. you have to suspend so much disbelief to to really inhabit the world that they're trying to present. And that that goes to a lot of the entertainment value of it. 
Mm-hmm. But is it about entertainment value alone? You know, is it about the, morally how it speaks to you? You know, philosophically how it speaks to you? And it does up to a point to me. But if it weren't for, if I pulled, say, William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy out of the equation, especially William Shatner, a lot of that entertainment value falls flat for me mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I watch it a lot for him and what he brings mm-hmm. into it. Not to disparage any of the other cast because I love them all. Sure. So that being said, I have to say that Enterprise is actually my favorite of the series because of what it means, not necessarily mm. how it was executed, but for what it means. And I can hand four seasons of Enterprise in that wonderful deluxe Blu-ray set to somebody <laughs> and say, this is how we get to the stars. This is what we yeah. do. Yeah. This is how we come together in 120 years from now. So it's not too terribly foreign for somebody to say, oh, sure. You know, now people are like, Blue Origin goes up. You can send people out into space, given that you have billions of dollars, but we're closer to Starfleet now looking at Enterprise than we were in the 1960s looking to the future. Mm. So Mm. I I like Enterprise for that sense. Now, was it perfectly executed? No, absolutely not. I I will confess that it has many flaws in the series itself. But what I think it tried to attempt to do was bring the right stuff into Star Trek. And we love the romanticism of the right stuff. That's why we love movies like, you know, uh, Hidden Figures and the right stuff and all of the yeah. movies that take us, Apollo 13, there's a romanticism of pre-Star Trek space flight, space flight from now or from the 1960s. That's what Enterprise brings to me, that the wonder and awe of, can we get out there? Will the warp five engine get us out there? Right. Or will we be doomed to our own, um, you know, uh, our own curiosity of which we see a, an entirely huge fall from grace when we think that there aren't enemies out there that we're, you know, that, that are in space because we're trying to get out there, but then they push back. And then what happens? Yeah. Right. Where does that leave us? So that's why I love enterprise so much. I, I love Enterprise too, and and honestly, I feel like that'll be a uh, a recurring thing that we get to in some of other of Paul's questions and some other comments uh, here on Engage. Um, well, here let, let's go to the next one. Okay, so Paul says this one in particular you may have answered multiple times, so please feel free to skip, but we won't. <laughs> what got you interested in Star Trek in the first place, and what still keeps you interested today? Um, well, okay. First is hard to answer. And I, I've mentioned it before on Mission Log and in some other podcasts. So I'll, I'll keep it short and just say that it's hard for me to remember a time from childhood that I wasn't into or aware of Star Trek. You know, I, I go back to that picture of me being like four or five years old and wearing the, uh, Steve Austin running suit from Six Million Dollar Man, but oh, wearing yeah. wearing the uh, the exploration belt uh, from Star Trek, and he had the phaser and the tricorder and the communicator, and holding my Mego action figures. You know, so this is it was around, and sure. that was just a, a good time for Star Trek to be around. What keeps me there is that, uh, well, you know, yeah, professionally, I I am now, (laughs) I talk about Star Trek. Uh, But the other thing is that there is so much that's good there that deserves to be explored. You know, it it would be one thing, there are certainly shows you can watch and you can like and then kind of put it away for a while. But with Star Trek there, first of all, there's a lot of it. And second of all, Anything that is well written, you can go back and discover new things about it. Um, and this, what what we do, what you and I get to do uh, week to week, is the most fun part about engaging with any kind of media that is provocative and challenging and interesting. You get to talk to your friends about it and mm-hmm. and see what you really think. And if you're pushed, maybe kind of form and reform your opinions about it. So Star Trek has a lot to offer and and I'm here for it. What about you? I don't remember a time that I wasn't in love with Star Trek it in in one shape or another. I, I think it's just something that was always kind of like in the pop culture lexicon of us growing up, right? Mm-hmm. It was always in reruns and then in in high school it was, you know, in reruns and then in call, you know, and then TNG happened at least for me in 1987 and then that was in college, my college years and it was just always there. Uh, was I paying attention to it as much as I should have in terms of morals, meanings, and messages? 
depends because uh, as, as we grow with fandoms, you know, new fandoms pop up and then our perspectives and our, our worldview changes. And then we go back to things like you said, John, in TOS and we're like, I didn't get that out of that mm-hmm. episode before, but I get that now. Um, so it's, it's, it's always been there for me. And, and sometimes I think that we take that for granted. Now, what keeps me interested today? I love watching and hearing and reading stories about how Star Trek changes lives. I love how people, they draw inspiration from it. They choose career paths because of it. They get married because of it. They have, they name their children after characters and episodes or their pets, or it brings an infinite amount of joy to so many people. And when they can express that and how that shaped their lives, changed their lives, saved their lives, mm-hmm. that's why I'm interested in Star Trek and want to see Star Trek continue because somewhere along the line, one episode will change something for somebody's life irrevocably. Yeah. Somewhere. And that's, that's the story that's worth hearing about. And that's why I love watching Star Trek. All right. Last question. So one thing you'd change about Trek, John. <laughs> that is really hard because A, you're asking me to limit it to one thing. And B, we'd have to pick like, well, when, what, what Star Trek? You know, we just did a question this week about Discovery, and there are definitely things that I would change about that specifically. Um, but if I look at Star Trek as a whole, then I, I think, and this is a weird way of saying it, I want Star Trek to be constantly grounded um, in a way that the characters are relatable because they're very human. They're, they're not magic. They're not uh, special other than that they work hard and they're good at their jobs. And uh, to expand a little bit, I'd say that I want Star Trek to be grounded in a way that we can all kind of watch it and, and start to infer those points of connection between Earth now and getting out there in the future. Um, I love it when Star Trek goes back to Earth and we just we check in like, oh, yeah, hey, we are actually from here. <laughs> and and these are the things that we've accomplished and we've taken care of. And now we get to go out there into the final frontier. Um, and, and I feel like that's good to have that check in, to have that understanding that, you know, our, our home still exists. There's a lot to be discovered away, but we're doing it because we care about the human element. You know, um, so that that's it. We, you know, we could get into other specifics uh, down the road with other questions. Uh, what about you, man? Well, I'm going to look at this a little bit more abstractly. So one thing I'd like to change about Trek is like I would love to be able to impart and have people understand that uh, that Trek isn't one size fits all. Hmm. That, you know, I, I wish that people would understand that a lot more, that the Trek of today doesn't invalidate the Trek of before or the Trek that's going to come. Every single series speaks to every single generation differently, and even that same generation differently over time. There's not one single formula to Star Trek that works. It all works because there are so many different reasons to watch it. There are so many different lifestyles that watch it. And just because one doesn't fit your mode of thinking or what you need, it doesn't mean that the one that you fell in love with before is invalidated anymore. Yeah. So... I wish that the overall fandom community would stop treating it as a, a one size fits all mentality. I love that. All right. Well, hey, Paul, thank you. And I look forward to more. And uh, all of you who are watching and listening to this, uh, check us out at youtube.com slash Roddenberry Prod. Make sure you subscribe and share that Mission Log Engage playlist. If you'd like to submit your questions or comments, email us at missionlog at roddenberry.com. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at Mission Log Pod. And remember, we may engage with your comments on the air.